always good to catch up, talk a little football. I think he's one of the uh, top defensive tackles in the NFL. And that, of course, is uh, Green Bay Packers DT Mike Daniels, kind enough to join me on a Friday on the Boardwalk kind of Highline. How you been, Mike? I mean, good. Rich, how are you? I, <laughs> I'm doing well. And, you know, I got to tell you this. First and foremost, I appreciate you jumping on board. I know you got a busy weekend. You got the second annual camp coming up this weekend. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, I- I'm seeing you all over the place now, TV. So I'm starting to think I helped you a little bit jumpstart your media career. What do you think about that? You know what? You <laughs> definitely have a part to play in that. Get I will never here. minimize your role in helping build the Mike Daniels brand. Uh, I, told your, I told your wife I was going to have a little fun with you. I was going to have a little fun at your ex- expense. Oh, but we're supposed to have some fun, right? That's what we're here to do. Exactly, exactly. Hey, listen, I know it was kind of an interesting offseason for you guys. Uh, a lot of movement, and then we saw the move with uh, Capers, and now uh, Penton as well as the defensive coordinator. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, here's a guy that he's had top 10 defenses pretty much everywhere he's gone. Um, you know, how is that defense now feeling playing under Mike? Oh, the defense definitely loves it. I know I, I love it. And we're having fun. We're really enjoying playing ball. And it's, it's like the dogs are cut loose. See ball, get ball, go, get after it. And that's that's what the game of football really is all about. So we're excited, super pumped, and I, I can't wait for the pads to come on to really see how good we actually are. Yeah, you got some depth on that uh, that line as well. I mean, yourself, Clark, you, you guys make the move for Wilkerson, I think uh, Lowry and Adams as well. Uh, and we talked about this even last year. Is it When you look at Aaron Rodgers, and listen, the nine games he missed last year, we know he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. We know he's an all-time great. That, that we, we don't dispute that. Do you feel, though... All right, it's another year where we just can't put too much on this guy's plate. We have to step it up, right? 26 in points uh, per game allowed, 22nd in yards last year. I mean, you know, you guys had somewhat of a rough year last year defensively. So do you think this is finally the year where, hey, Aaron, we're not going to put it all on you? I, I firmly believe that year, that's the, this is the year because that's the feeling throughout the building. Our defensive coordinator feels that way. The head coach said the defense needs to be better than the offense. So I think a lot of the old mentality of, hey, we have Aaron, just keep it close. I think it's no, let's smother these guys Mm -hmm. and get after them. And that's what, that's what defense is, what football is. And I love it. I, I absolutely love it. It starts in practice. We've been having some really good practices. Granted, it's OTAs. There's no hitting. There's no no pads. Right. But we're we're still been doing really well. I love the way our rookie defensive backs look. Uh, our rookie linebacker looks very good, and our second year, third year guys are really taking those jumps, taking those steps that we need to be a top tier defense in the NFL. You know, t- typically you guys, uh, when you look at the offseason over the last several years, right, I mean, it's kind of been different for you guys from a defensive standpoint. You kind of pretty much would stand around. You'd see what Rodgers and McCarthy would implement with the offense. This year, now you got a new defense that's implemented. So, as you allow, you know, you, you mentioned the, the, the guys are getting ready to go after it. Um, the one thing I know about – uh, Pet and with his defense, a lot, you know, guys, you kind of unleash them, right? You let them loose. There's, you know, a lot of speed, a lot of quickness. Um, uh, that defense, it's not as complex, and you can probably speak a little more to this. I would imagine as capers, it allows you guys to play a lot quicker. Is that accurate? Yes, absolutely. And Coach Capers' defense, when we were on, you want he won, he won the Super Bowl that defense. They were top ten two years in a row with that defense. So, but NFL, you know, the game is it's just the NFL. You see great coaches have to step away all throughout the league. Every year, the great Tom Landry had to step away from coaching. Vince yeah. Lombardi had to step away from coaching at some point. That's just the NFL. The game changes and morphs. And I think Coach Petten's scheme definitely speaks to his players, or caters to his players, rather. Uh, to our abilities a lot, and I'm just very excited. I'm very excited. Frustrating watching uh, the playoffs at home last year? Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. I've never done it before. I've never done it, and to be able to say that is 
it's a blessing, really, because I know some guys that play their whole career, never see a playoffs, play 10 years, eight years, nine years, playing one playoff game, maybe. And to be able to say that I'm on the opposite end of that, where what I missed my, I've played in, I want to say 11 or 10 playoff games in five football seasons. That's, that's impressive. Oh, no doubt. And it probably had to kill you last year to watch, especially, listen, <laughs> and I'm not trying to add salt in the wound here, but especially to see what goes on, what transpired in our backyard with the Eagles and Wentz going down and then Foles stepping up and having a remarkable win, a remarkable run, I should say, and then it culminates in a Super Bowl win. Because let's be honest, neither team defensively was able to stop either offense in that Super Bowl. Could have went either way. I was just talking to somebody, and they said that Super Bowl didn't have a lot of defense in it, but the defenses made the plays when they were when they no doubt were needed to be made. No doubt. And sometimes, sometimes that's uh, that's how a game can run, but that's not ideal. And you have two defenses that were dominant. Now, I know the Patriots struggled a little bit last year, but they're typically a dominant defense, and the Eagles were just playing out of their minds. So for them both to have the hardships they had in the Super Bowl, that's telling of how good those two quarterbacks and those schemes were. Yeah, listen, I mean, it was it was a quarterback's dream that game, the way the offenses were. And I give I give credit to Foles. I mean, listen, they, they had some gutsy, really gutsy calls in that game that certainly uh, worked out. And uh, you're right. I mean, when they needed to stop, they got to stop. And that's, that's typically, no matter what, the defense figures out a way to win championships. Uh, again, a couple minutes with uh, the great uh, defensive tackle, Mike Daniels, Green Bay Packers. He's got his second annual youth football camp tomorrow, June 23rd, Highland Regional High School. Uh, Check-in is at 8. Camp starts around 9 to noon. Uh, you guys, you put closing on registration just yet? So actually, the the football camp had to get moved from Highland because, and my wife's about to send an email to everybody, but it had to get moved to, I believe the facility is called ISC, and it's a sports complex in Cherry Hill. In Cherry Hill, and, yep, I know exactly yeah, where that yeah, is. Yeah, because yep. the yeah we 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 well. We got a thunderstorm coming in tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so you have to put you have to put everything indoors. Last year, I remember it was like a, it was like 110 degrees. Oh my goodness! You would have thought that we were down there in uh, you know, down south somewhere. It's so hot. Yeah, yeah you you were you were listen. You were, listen, year, you were we working we the kids last year. Bro. Yeah, did they even get a water oh, break yeah, last oh. year? <laughs> no, no, they definitely got the water breaks and they came right back to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, you know, yeah, but we got after it. <laughs> let me uh, let me do a little word association with you uh, for a minute or two. Got let me give it. you a couple uh, hey, defensive tackles. Uh, give me one or two words to describe him. Uh, Aaron Donald. Impossible to block. Uh, Sneaky and quick. Gerald McCoy. You know what he's doing? You can't stop it. He's going to run by you and make you look goofy. Fletcher Cox. Powerful, long arms, gets to your chest, you're dead. Uh, Snacks Harrison. A wall with dreads. When you get the ball, expect to run into him. Uh, Mike Daniels. Your life is going to suck until this game is over. <laughs> I said a word or two. <laughs> you gave me a whole phrase. I can't help it. I'm now, a very descriptive individual. I'm a Jersey guy. You listen, know what I mean? I, I know. I, like I know talk. that. I like to get my th my thoughts and feelings out there. What What do you think? And I know I asked you this last year, and I know you can't comment too much on it because I, it's, it's a loaded question, but I'm curious. The rule changes that we're seeing implemented in the NFL, it, for a guy like you, when you're going against, you know, tackle, you know, offensive linemen and guys like that, does it benefit guys like you? Does it take away? Is there are, are they kind of well, really? What were some of the rule changes? Because I wasn't really. Made... Well, you know, basically, like again, with with eventually, it's going to be something where the guys can't, especially on the line on the offensive side of the ball, uh, jump. You know, with the head. So it's like to try to get position. So you guys have a little more of an opportunity uh, for the bull rush, or basically just to manhandle them. They're really just taking a lot of the wait. What happened? The hitting out of the game. It's basically the wait. Hold on, hold on. What? This is confusing. Now, that that don't even sound. No, 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 no. The, <laughs> no, 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 no. The rules changes that they're looking to do that they're looking to put in Correct. place with the linemen. 
forget about the kickoff rules. Uh, you've got the rule changes for the helmet hit is what I should say. And then you've got the rule changes for the kickoff. The helmet hit, we talk about lowering the head, initiating making contact. We got the revised oh, standard for the catch. Oh, okay. So I'm going with some of these. So Permission with, with for the, command center. With, Go ahead. I'm sorry to cut you off, but with the linemen, that's going to be impossible to govern. What happens if all five – what happens if we get in a five-man front and all five linemen – all hit all five linemen in the head. What do you do? Well, that, that's that's my point. That's why I'm asking. That's, that's why I'm asking you. I didn't clarify it as best as I should have, but yes, that's what. How do you how do you legislate that type of rule? Or you you can't. I don't think you can. I, I don't know. I, I really don't think you can. Like I said, there's going to there's been there's been times in football where. Three linemen have made helmet contact with three other linemen all at the same time. Right. So now it's, you're going to actually need um, instant replay and slow motion to see who initiated the first helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Then will there be any offset penalties for the helmet-to-helmets -helmet that happen in the, in, across the board? But, but isn't – yes, but isn't it still subjective, though? See, the problem is the way they're making all these rule changes, you are still, you're somewhat taking the human element out of the game, are you not? Like the 15-yard penalty for lowering head. How many times have we seen a running back get penalized for lowering his head? You've never seen it before. But yet, there's, there, it's, still, it's still a rule. Say that. Say that one time. So you've got the rule now. Remember where the running back in the field of play when you lower the head? Correct. Okay, and you cannot, the running back cannot lower their head into a defender. Now, how many times have you seen a running back lower their head to get extra yardage? And we've never seen the fly get thrown. My point is basically they're, they're really hamstring and they're taking the hitting out of football. And now everything is ticky-tack. So when you lower your head to initiate and make contact with his helmet against an opponent, it's going to cost you 15 yards. Yeah, I mean, okay, so you don't want to lower your head and spear somebody when you have the ball in your hands, right? That, 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 I think that's, that's, that's what they're really trying to take out of the game because, like you said, the human element, there's going to be times where you fall forward, you try to get your shoulder forward, but your head may go first. <laughs> you know, the human body, right? So, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. It's weird. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, I'm just, you know, again, I, I know it, it changes, and we always, every Monday when we come on after we watch these games on a Sunday, I mean, you know this, how many <laughs> how many times a game do you think an offensive uh, line should be called for holding? How many times is the offensive lineman called for holding, you no, I'm just saying, when you're playing and you're in the trenches, how many times are you screaming for a flag for holding? How many times a game? The, you know, there, there there's been... A few times, a few. There were, there's been some games more than others where there's games where I'm not saying anything at all. There's games where there's a couple holes. I'm like, okay, well, you, if I didn't want to get held, I should have had better technique. Then there's games where it's just blatant and just ridiculous. For instance, first played it, or first third down Monday Night Football in what late October, early December, no, early November, I think, against the Lions. Okay. I'm coming across on a stunt. Their center, I beat him like a drum. The center pulls me from behind. Literally has a grip of my shoulder pad. Pull makes me spin. I don't spin. <laughs> if this guy's not pulling me. Exactly. Yeah, that's I mean, right. I had Stafford. I had Stafford dead to right. This guy pulls me, spins. I get pissed. I turn around my head, buddy. They call a 15 yarder on me. And I'm like, okay. Should I have lost my cool head, buddy? Him. That's debatable. <laughs> no, 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 obviously, you don't want to. You don't want to hurt the team, right? That but, was a. Tra you know what? I remember that game. You got. You lost that yeah. game. That was Travis Swanson, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I God remember that. From behind. Yeah, I'm I remember like, that. First of all, I'm like, dude, you're a better player than that. You don't have to. You got beat. You got beat. You don't got to pull a guy from behind. Yeah. But the referee was standing right there, and, and he then he tells it. me, "Yeah, I saw him pull you, but I saw your head, but him." Yeah, <laughs> it's the second guy always gets caught. You should know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But here's the deal: when he pulled me, I didn't see a flag. 
Right. This is a flag I'm flying up. Right, right, right. You watch the film, I'm like, if you see my whole body spin. So it's those type of plays that really make you say, all right, I'm going to have mercy on the ref because he's a human and he made a mistake himself. But how many of these mistakes are you going to allow to keep going on? Those are the plays I have an issue with. You want the consistency, you can't call right? Plays like that, right? Come on. No, I hear Come you. Right, well, listen, on. it's I'm always been the like consistency. A good block where listen, there's going to be times where all the guys had a good block. Hey, you let them grab you. That's your fault. Yeah. But if a guy yanks you from behind, come on now. Let's let's be real here. I don't know. Every time I seem to have a conversation with you, I get a little fired up. No, because we actually talk ball, and I love ball, <laughs> and I get fired up when I talk about ball. <laughs> Listen, who do uh, nature, who, <laughs> who do you have appearing tomorrow? What, uh, you have any uh, uh, same guys from last year? Any notable players coming out? What's what's the game plan uh, for tomorrow? Yeah. A little more you know, quiet to do like this year. Speak. I don't, I don't really like to speak on the guys coming until um, they actually get there. You I, know, because yeah, yep, I got so you. Busy. But I, I know got you. as of now, I got two of my big boys, Big Mo and Snacks, and that's gonna be really. Hold fun. on a second. You have Snacks coming tomorrow, and I didn't get confirmation. Snacks on... is coming. Snacks is coming. Snacks is coming. All right. In fact, I'm going to text him and say, hey, I just told everybody on the radio you're coming, so if you back out, I'm going to come find you. <laughs> Which he won't. Snacks is a great guy. I've known him since college, man. Yeah, listen, that was a tough year for the Giants. He had a career year last year. He's he's one of the best run stoppers in the game. You know, hopefully they can uh, Oh, absolutely. get it together. I so. call him a wall with dreads for a reason. You I, know I, 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 I know. That's right. That's, that's, a, that's a, a term in endearment. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, listen, I, I don't want to monopolize your time too much. I can talk football with you all day. You got Listen, oh, when you guys are back in here, listen, when you are back here, you have to come in studio, and we'll blast it out for two hours. Got it. All got right. it. I, look, I talk ball all day, man. You know that. You know I, me. I, hey, that's that's why I just remember well, when— Here's the deal. Will you, will you be at the camp again? Huh? I, I, have a, I have a broadcast commitment. You know if I didn't, I would have been there. You know that. I know you would. I was I there. I was there walking. Ar- I was there walking around, yeah, yeah, picking yeah. everyone's brain. I was getting on players' nerves, uh, interviewing them, and recording them. I- I'll tell you a quick story, real quick, before I let you go. And I probably <laughs> because I know we're tight on time. So last year, I'm talking to your lovely wife, and she's like, "You know some of these players." I was like, "Yeah, okay, I see Jari, I see Adam, okay, I see I see Sanu." So I'm like, "All right, let me just go through my stuff." I walk over to Sanu, reintroduce myself. You know, okay, Jersey guy, Rutgers guy. Talking about the camp, and then, you know, I just happened to ask the football question. And you know what football question I asked him. I had to revert back to the Super Bowl, and it was one of those, uh, I'm here to talk about the camp. So I just kind of said one more time, well, you know, have you over? And he just looked at me and walked away, and I was like, I appreciate a couple moments. And then I think Cook was right behind me, and he goes, are you going to interview me, uh, interview me too? <laughs> He just started laughing, and he walked away. So I didn't. I didn't make a lot of friends that day, Mike. I didn't. Hey, you know what, man? Here's the deal. Wounds are um, wounds are fresh. I know. Rest of your life. I know. Listen, I know. you you can ask him about that twenty years from now. <laughs> I, I know. He. Let me tell you though. He. Listen, can... Hey, you bring up that NFC Championship game in Seattle to me. <laughs> well, no, well, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, hey, that's the response you just want to get from us. <laughs> yeah, I know. He gave me the look and the rest. Stay fresh. Listen, the rest of the camp. I even went and I said it was nice. And he just gave me, like, get get the hell out of here. And I said, okay, it was good seeing you again. We'll see you next year. <laughs> hey, you come to my camp. Don't ask him about the death. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you had a really good year. It was fun watching, you know what I mean? Hopefully everything goes well next year. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. That's I should have said that. I learned my lesson. I appreciated good oh, stuff man. with the environment. Oh, well, here's just... the deal. Here's the deal. You understand. You're also dealing with Jersey guys, too. You know us, man. <laughs> what are you talking I'm one of them. I know. You should have taken care of my own. I should have got a good answer. I was looking for a good sound bite. And then I went back and I watched the video and I was like, man, he just looks like a dog getting ready to jump oh on me. Goodness. Yeah. So I kind of. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, I'm a piece of work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Listen, always oh, wow. good to. <laughs> always. I'm glad I made you laugh. Always good to uh, always. catch up. Uh, you know, I would yeah, definitely be there tomorrow if I end of a commitment, but we're going to get you in studio. Oh, I know. We'll have a little fun. Know, man. All right, Mike. Perfect. Hey, listen. I'm looking forward to it. Always appreciate it, pal. Have a great week. All right. We'll talk to you. Have a great one. I'll talk to you. All right. You got to be well. All right. Mike Daniels, defensive tackle for the Green Bay Packers. Always fun talking a little football with him.